This Charvel J90C humbucker came in for a repair. It's not working, so let's take a deep dive into what's going wrong. First, I'll set my meter to 20k ohms. I'll test the hot and ground leads with the humbucker in standard mode, which means both coils are joined together in series. In this case, that means red and white soldered together, and green and black are the hot and ground leads. As expected, we've got nothing. I'll set my meter to 200k ohms and test again, just in case the pickup reads out over 20k. Again, nothing. Now to test the two coils of the humbucker separately. Remember, humbuckers are merely two single coils with either their two starting wires or two finishing wires joined together. If you break that connection, you get two independent single coils. In this case, that connection is the red and white wires. I break the connection by opening the jaws of a pair of pliers to press the wires apart while I put a soldering iron between them and gently push up. Most of the time, that'll do the trick. And then you've got five separate wires. One start and one finish for each coil, and then the independent bare ground wire, which is connected to the metal base plate. Now I'm going to hold the probe on one wire and touch the other probe to every other wire one at a time. When I get a readout between two wires, that means I've completed the circuit for one of the coils. The two remaining wires that the probes are not touching are the start and finish wires for the other coil. But here we don't have to worry about that at all, because I'm getting absolutely nothing in any of the combinations. Things are not looking great for this humbucker. But we're not done yet. Next is the continuity test. I'll set the multimeter to continuity mode, then touch and hold one probe to the base plate. Then, one at a time, I'll touch the other probe to each of the five wires. Only the bare ground wire should beep, signaling continuity. If any of the other wires are beeping, that means they're electrically connected to the base plate, which means they're shorting to ground, which means we'll get no readout or signal from the pickup. It looks like everything checks out. We're only getting continuity between the base plate and the bare ground wire, which is what we want to see. I'll use my DE5000 LCR meter next. It can reveal things that a multimeter can't for a more complete picture of what's going on. Testing the slug side coil, that would be the black and red wires, I'm getting an inductance of around 1500 millihenries. That is very, very low, especially for such a hot, high output humbucker as the J90C. This is a definite sign that something is wrong. 139 picofarads capacitance seems somewhat normal. A bit high for a single humbucker bobbin, but nothing too alarming. However, there's still no DCR reading, which is a huge red flag. I've heard the capacitors wired in line with a pickup can cause it to have no DC resistance reading, but I don't think that's the case here. Testing the screw side coil, that would be the green and white wires, I'm getting nothing but red flags. DCR around 138 mega ohms, which implies a break in the coil wire, super low capacitance around 14 picofarads, and no inductance reading to speak of. The other coil looks better, but remember, there is no almost with pickups. They either work or they don't. And judging by the readings I'm getting on my meter, both of these coils are broken. Now for the tap test, if only for demonstration. I use two lengths of cloth pushback wire with a quarter inch plug soldered to one end, and two miniature alligator clips soldered to the other. The plug goes into an amp, and the alligator clips attach to the pickup leads. I'll tap the pole pieces with a screwdriver, and if there's any output, I'll hear it through the amp. The screw side coil is dead. The faint tapping noise is probably the slug side bobbin picking up the signal, as you can hear that coil has a much better output. It almost sounds normal, but don't be deceived. The extremely low inductance reading and the lack of DC resistance tells us this pickup is not working properly. Never rely on the tap test as a standalone diagnostic. Next is to take the pickups off of the base plate and get a good look at what's going on with the wiring. Looking at the screw side coil, I can see the leads aren't even connected to the four conductor hookup wire. That would explain the lack of readout and signal. But it gets worse. I can see the finish wire, but all that's left of the start wire is this little bit sticking out from the bottom of the coil. While such a short length of wire isn't impossible to splice, the times I've done it were all on fender style fiberboard bobbins. The soldering iron would burn right through this bobbin, which is made of plastic. The other coil is also not working, and I can't see anything obviously wrong with the wiring. 
The solution here is what I expected all along, and what ends up being necessary probably over 90% of the time with broken pickups. Rewinding the pickup from scratch. But where to start? I don't have a reference coil, so I have to resort to Google to see what I can find. I was lucky enough to find this website, which mentions the J90C has a DC resistance of about 16K and an inductance of about 10 Henrys. That's a start, but what about the wire gauge and turn count? I can determine that by measuring an actual strand of the coil wire with a micrometer. I'll thread the coil wire through with both hands, then carefully take one hand away to tighten the micrometer jaws. 42 gauge single build poly nylon wire is approximately 0.0028 inches thick, or 0.07 millimeters. The wire on this pickup is measuring 0.0025 inches thick, or 0.06 millimeters, which happens to be 43 gauge wire. Knowing the wire gauge will allow me to estimate the turn count, either by referring to my prior experience winding pickups, or using an online calculator like the JD Guitar Works Pickup Coil Estimator. For a bobbin of this size, 43 gauge wire will be roughly 1K per 1,000 turns, meaning for a 16K humbucker, each bobbin should be wound with about 8,000 turns, or to 8K each. My bet is that will also land the humbucker right around 10 Henrys, in accordance with that website's information on the J90C. Now that I have a plan, it's time to tear down the old coils. Using a small pair of diagonal cutters, I'll cut through the coil and pull it off. This process can take a while, and as I get near the end, I'll switch to an X-Acto knife. I'll then use a file to smooth over any rough areas of the bobbin that might cause the wire to snag or break while I'm winding. To prepare the pickup for winding, I'll use some strong double stick tape on the back of the bobbin to mount it to my plywood disc. I prefer machine screw and nut mounts when possible, but I haven't made anything for a humbucker of this size yet. Place the pickup as close to the center of the plate as possible. I used a circle center finder to draw some reference lines to help me with that. I wrap the magnet wire around the bobbin a few times to start, then tie the magnet wire around a small screw I have sticking out of the plywood disc. You can just break the excess wire off, or you can use some scotch tape to secure it to the winding disc. Then I'll wind the bobbin to the aforementioned 8,000 turns. However, I'm not going to trust that blindly without verification. After winding the pickup to 6,500 turns, I'm going to use my multimeter to test it. Using my soldering iron, I'll carefully tin both the start and finish magnet wire leads. This will allow the probes of the multimeter to make an electrical connection and give me a DC resistance reading. So, at 6,500 turns, I can see that I'm at 6.46K. It's practically dead on to my prediction that 1,000 turns of 43 gauge wire will give about 1K of resistance on a bobbin of these dimensions. I'll continue winding to 8,000 turns, and then it's time to solder on the 28 gauge hookup wires, which some people call the pigtails. To keep the leads from shorting out on the coil, I'll put down a layer of black cloth electrical tape over the coil. This is extremely important. Almost every single time I've had a brand new humbucker fail, this was the culprit. Do not skip this step. I'll make the pigtail by wrapping the magnet wire around the hookup wire, dabbing it with a little flux, and tinning it with my soldering iron. Then I'll lay the pigtail on top of the tape and super glue it in place. This will lock the pigtail down so it can't inadvertently move and break the delicate magnet wire. I didn't use super glue accelerator in this case, but applying a little with a pipette or a bamboo skewer can really speed things along. I'll then tape over the pigtail for extra protection. I've heard DiMarzio actually uses a similar method and super glues these two layers of tape together. Not a bad idea, but I didn't go that far this time around. Just remember, you want those pigtails secured as solidly as possible. Now, for the slug side coil, I want to wind it in the same direction as the other coil. That's just how I do my humbuckers. But my winder only turns in one direction, and since I need to use double stick tape, that means I need to press the slugs out. Using a block I made for pressing out strat pickup magnets, I'll load the humbucker bobbin on top. You can see the slugs protruding out the back on the left. Those are the ones I haven't pressed yet. The ones on the right are pressed flush with the back, leaving them raised up a bit on the front. This will allow me to double stick tape the back of the pickup, wind the coil, attach the pigtails, then press the magnets flush with the top again. I'm using my one ton arbor press with a small neodymium disc magnet on the ram to get the job done. Once the pigtails are attached to both pickups, I'm going to pot them in a mix of beeswax and paraffin wax. I keep the pot at roughly 145 degrees Fahrenheit. 
I usually just pot the entire humbucker at the end, but I wanted to demonstrate that if you want to pot the coils before wrapping them with tape, you can do so with the superglued pigtail method. They're durable enough to suspend the pickup without any risk of breaking the lead wires off. While the coils are relaxing in the wax bath, I'll clean the base plate off with Bell and Waxer, and then I'll write the turn count and wire gauge I used to rewind the humbucker, just in case anyone ever looks under there again. Then I'll give it a couple coats of clear acrylic enamel to seal it. The last step is taping over the wax potted bobbins individually, then mounting the ceramic bar magnet and bobbins back onto the base plate, attaching the four conductor wire, wax potting the assembled pickup, and taping around the entire pickup a few times to protect it. I used four different colors for the pigtails, which correspond with the four colors of the four conductor wire. Red, black, white, and green. Red is north finish, and black is north start, and white is south finish, while green is south start. Using color-coded leads on the bobbins makes matching the wires I need to splice a lot easier. Black to black, red to red, and so on. But make no mistake, splicing these wires together is a royal pain, and tucking them neatly away before wrapping the coil is also a royal pain. I'm still refining my method for doing this as cleanly as possible. But for now, tedious is putting it lightly. I'll do a final measurement with my LCR meter, Gauss meter, and USB oscilloscope to keep this humbucker in my records before packing it up to ship back to the owner. Check the description box for a link to my complete pickup testing guide, which goes over this process in comprehensive detail. The final readings were 16.3K, 10.46 Henrys, 76 picofarads, a resonant peak of 1.05 dB at 1.6 kHz, and what I call an attenuation frequency of negative 0.35 dB at 2.3 kHz. That's the first frequency at which the pickup starts losing decibel voltage, the first frequency that the pickup starts attenuating. The resonant peak and the attenuation frequency together give a more complete picture compared to just the resonant peak alone. These numbers indicate that this rewound J90C is even more powerful than it was originally, judging by the specifications listed on charvelusa.com. Suffice to say, this is a very hard-hitting humbucker with a sledgehammer's worth of mid-range and output. You can't really hear that with the tap test through the amplifier, but you'll have to trust the numbers and take my word for it. I'm very excited to hear what the owner will have to say about it once he gets a chance to install it in his guitar and give it a test run through a good, loud amplifier. Be sure to check the link in the description box to my complete video guide for building a single coil pickup, as well as my diagnosis and repair videos for single coil pickups. In almost every case, you're going to end up rewinding the pickup, but you might find the process of confirming that a pickup is actually dead interesting to watch. And it'll give you tips on how to do that process yourself. I've had at least one viewer who was able to fix his pickup by using my wire splice repair method, which I'll also link to in the description box. And that'll do it for today. Stay tuned for more Guitar Everything, right here on Guitar MD.